Making video games is a blast. Until these little guys show up. Bugs. No, no, no. I'm talking about these kinds of bugs. If you're a programmer or a game developer, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. But fixing bugs doesn't have to be like this. Instead, let me show you how it can actually be kind of fun. I've been thinking about artificial intelligence for a while, and one day this video popped up in my feed. Sebastian Lag made a chess AI using an algorithm called the Minimax. After some more research, I was really curious and wanted to implement it into one of my games. Alright, here's the idea. It's chess, but with a 6x6 grid. The pieces all move the same, except the end goals are a little different. There are no checks, the opponent is trying to take your king. As for the player's goal, they have to get their king to the other side. I developed a system for moving pieces and finding their legal moves, and after a lot of bug fixing, the pieces were all moving properly. Uh, After some more problem solving, I actually had the pieces moving properly. The next thing to do was making the AI, the part that I was really excited for. Let's use chess as an example. This black dot will represent the current position of the board where it's black to move. To simplify things, we'll say that black only has two possible moves. This means that these two white dots are the resulting positions where it's white to move. Then these are the resulting positions with black to move, and so on. The entire search will decide whether black should make move on the left or on the right. We'll start by evaluating the positions on the bottom. This would be different depending on the game, but for chess we could add up the value of white's pieces and subtract the value of black's pieces. This means white is always trying to maximize the score, and black is trying to minimize it. We'll give these bottom positions some random values. Since black is trying to minimize the score, it'll choose the lowest value, which is negative one. Then after we evaluate these bottom positions, black will choose five. Then white will choose the highest score, which will also be five. This will repeat for the other side, and once that's done, black will be able to decide the best move. This was a very basic example. Keep in mind that in a practical scenario, there would be 10 to 20 layers, with 20 to 100 possible moves in each layer. If you want a more thorough explanation, I'll leave a link to Sebastian Lag's video in the description. When I finally finished and I hit the play button, it didn't work. This was bad. Normally a log message tells you where the program went wrong, but in this case it didn't help. This meant that anything could have gone wrong, and I might as well just have quit. At least, that's what I would have said when I just started programming. I checked quickly to see if there was anything wrong with the Minimax algorithm, but it looked pretty clean. This meant that the problem was most likely due to a piece making some sort of move they weren't allowed to. The first step was to figure out what was going wrong, so I set up an analysis mode for the game. This allowed me to see every single move that the AI was making when searching for the best one. These dots on the left show which layer the AI is currently on. The current branch is which move in the layer is being analyzed. To speed up searching through positions, I added the ability to skip branches. However, when analyzing six layers, there are millions of moves to analyze, so searching through all of them wasn't an option. I decided to log every single move, so when the program crashed, I had a report of the last move before crashing. Huh? Yeah, that's not right. After I fixed it, the program was running properly without crashing. However, that's not quite where it ended. In chess, when a player is guaranteed to be checkmated the next turn, we call it mate in one. So in my variation of chess, mate in one is when the white king can be taken the next turn, no matter what move is played. If you watch the moves that the AI plays, you'll notice something funny. At first glance, it looks like it's broken and simply isn't making the right move, which would be to take the king. To fix this, I could look back at my code and check if anything is wrong, randomly commenting out lines and trying to find the needle in the haystack. But there's a better approach. Instead, let's look back at the moves the AI made. If you're paying attention, you'll notice that after every move, it's still mate in one. It keeps finding the mates in one, but it never actually takes the king. Okay, that's interesting. We can work with that. I kept it in the back of my mind as I scrolled through my code, and suddenly, it hit me. In my minimax algorithm, if the white king is taken, I assign an evaluation of negative infinity because it's the best possible move for black. This works unless we have a situation like this. This move on the right means taking the king, so the game is over after that. This move on the left is mate in one. The king is guaranteed to be taken on the next move. Obviously, the right choice for black is the move on the right, but since the evaluations are the same value, black has no reason to favor the right move over the left one, and he'll choose the left since it was analyzed first. This will keep repeating until eventually, taking the king will be the first move to be analyzed. The fix for this was pretty simple. Just make the score higher, the deeper the layer is, so black will favor moves in shallower layers. 
I finally had the algorithm working, and that's when I found some big flaws in the game itself. My original vision was sort of a roguelike, where the player would just start off with the king and build their way up to more pieces. But when playing against the AI, I realized that if it was king versus rook, king versus queen, or even king versus king, it would always be a draw. I was tired of the project, and this new information made me put it on the shelf of abandoned ideas. This project wasn't a waste though. I still had fun, I satisfied my itch to make an AI, and I learned some valuable skills about debugging. If you have any questions or ideas, leave a comment or head over to the Discord server.